Like, I can't personally think of a better way to go up. Like, if I know I'm terminal, and I might die frail on my own, or, you know, I can't think of a better way to go than, you know, having the warm embrace of a loved one. You know what it is? Hey everybody, hey! welcome to Boys Kiss Boys Butts, the best channel on the internet. We should fucking Where we butts. kiss boys butts all day. Oh god, don't take that out of context. Take it out of context. Don't do it. Fuck, we should Clip that this. shit and add it to an animation. <laughs> Cause I kiss boys butts. No, go. I don't kiss boys butts. Yeah, see? Backpedaling now, are we? Okay, we should rename the channel Boys Kiss Boys Butt, so... <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of that? Leave it in the comments below. Yeah, that's our new new channel name. Rolls right off the tongue if you ask me. <laughs> Don't say it. I was gonna say it, but no, I, just, yeah. I decided that was Usually not the thing to say. you do roll the butt off the tongue, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. That's the... No! That's not what we're about here. Yeah, we're just about... <laughs> <laughs> we're just about Boys Kiss and Boys Butt. Oh, God, no. Only 18 year olds, only legal. Legal boys kiss boys butts. <laughs> barely, oh. barely legal boys kiss boys butts. Oh fuck Dustin, no! <laughs> Anybody that comes to this channel on this video is it's immediately gone. Immediately gone. <laughs> oh god. So a comment if you've ever kissed a boy's butt? Yeah, if you guys are boys kissing boys butts out there, good for you. You know, you're on the front lines. Right off the bat, a minute 30, boys kissing boys butts, I beat the level, boom. <laughs> this, nice. This is great. This is okay. an unfortunate start to an episode. So, let's go straight into our topic of discussion. Yes, right here we from go. From boys kiss boys butts to assisted suicide. Oh, fuck. That's the next, <laughs> that's the next logical step, that's is it not? Good segue. Yeah, perfect, Dustin. The oh, master of segues. I was on Reddit. And uh, I don't know if you're a part of, I don't know if you go and check out our relationships at all. No. I, I don't know why, but I, I like being a part of that. I just like reading how much worse everyone else's relationships <laughs> are. It makes me feel better about, well not better about mine, but I'm always like, fuck, I got a good relationship. Yeah. But there was one the other day. Okay, I'm on to King K rule now. This is really oh, good. Shit. Take your time. But there was this one the other day where the... I think it was the daughter. They were living in a place where sister suicide is totally legal, and she didn't like her dad didn't even try, didn't even bother trying to trying to get better. Right, he didn't want treatment or anything when they told them that there was a pretty good chance that he could mm -hmm. um, live through it, and that he that they probably could cure it. Yeah, it was like sixty percent or something like that. Well, that's a pretty good chance. Why would you not go for it? He didn't want to be sick. He didn't want to go through that stuff. He just wanted to live just his wanted best to life die? and go like... out. So yeah, he just decided. I'm. How much time do I got if I don't get the treatment? And they said, honestly, max a year and a half. If you just let it go, it'll spread, and a year and a half from now, you're you're done. So then, uh, yeah, a year, year and a half was going by, and then um, he decided, like, partway through it, that he wasn't feeling so great, so he decided he wanted to do a suicide. So it's one of those things where, where do you draw the line? On, like, we, okay, you know, this guy could get better, but he just doesn't want to, so we're gonna let him die? Like, I don't agree with suicide. But I do agree in some situations where, you know what, it, maybe it's just time, maybe they're just in way too much pain, or maybe they're brain dead, you know, like you see that yeah. all the time, Terry Schiavo, right, mm -hmm. um, brain dead, they're not, it's a terrible life to live, they don't even really know that they're living that life, so yeah. in that, I would say that, fuck. <laughs> the what? You beat it! No, son of a bitch! I'm not done yet. Oh, you're not? Nope. Mm -hmm. um, the family saying that it, it, maybe it's time to pull the plug. I, I, I would tend to agree with that. You know, um, if you're a spiritual person, sending them to the afterlife where they're not going to be in pain anymore and you've made that decision. Mm -hmm. But where somebody can definitely still live or, you know, isn't, oh! isn't that bad off. Should somebody, should a person have the ability to end their life at any point? 
Like, it's my, a lot of people say it's my life. Why do you care what I do with it? Excuse <laughs> me? And then... Yeah, but at the same time, yeah, it's my life, but you're essentially asking the doctors to murder you. Yeah. Oh, good. I lost some But even, like... Okay. But you... Uh, let's say... Let's say you're... You have depression or whatever. Which is terrible. Um, if you're fans of the channel, you... I mean, you guys have heard me talk about this before. I'm not without my mental my mental issues. And I've had those thoughts, but at the same time, <clears throat> it's like the people that make sure that the semi-driver kills them. Or blow their, blow their brains out in their parents' house. You are fucking someone up for the rest of their life, too. Like, it, that's another part of it. it. Like, suicide is such a fucking... Sometimes it's like sometimes I agree that somebody is better off, but at the it, there's also the other part of well. It doesn't just it doesn't just affect you, and I know a lot of yeah. people may have a problem with me saying that. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't just affect you because I mean like your whole family now has to live with that, especially if somebody had to find you. Yeah, like that person's gonna be fucked up because they they found. A beloved family member or whatever dead. So there's been cases. I think it's in Sweden and it's fully legal. What fuck? Is it Sweden? Do you know? I'm not sure. Or Switzerland. I think. It, oh, I think it's actually Switzerland, um, where they have the chocolates or whatever for you to eat and all your family's around, and then the chocolate puts you to sleep and that's it. <coughs> but there's been... I don't think I've ever heard of that, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. There, yeah, so if you're terminally ill, you just while you're still in the right state of mind, it can say your goodbyes. You bring all your family into a room. The nurse gives you a piece of chocolate and you eat it, and then your wife or whatever holds you as you pass away. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking... I don't know how to explain it other than it's beautifully sad. Fuck. Like, I can't personally think of a better way to go up. Like, if I know I'm terminal... And I might die frail on my own, or, you know, I can't think of a better way to go than, you know, having the warm embrace of a loved one. I, I, um, you know, you know, I, I guess, yeah. Um, at the same time, it's like, you know, I guess if they were gonna die anyways, but I, how awful would that be though, like, sitting there you know the final hour is there and you're gonna hold them while they die. I, it, it's, I don't know. I, I'm kind of weird about death. It's it's just I death scares the fuck out of me. Oh yeah, it does. I I I think about death so much. Like it keeps me up at night. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's my it's one of my phobias. Um, death definitely is, and it scares the hell out of me. I don't like thinking about it because yeah, I won't sleep. Um, but then I think about that, and, and, and but there's another side to it, and that's what I was getting at. Yeah, you're surrounded by all the people, you're saying your goodbyes, you know, your wife or, or whatever is holding you as you pass away, and you're comforted, and you know, you know, you have no regrets as you're going out. And I'm talking like, the doctor tells you you have three months to live, you have brain cancer, and you have three months to live. Mm -hmm. and but at the same time... No matter what. I mean, they can say that, but... What, some people would still hold up for a miracle because they're, I mean, I guess... Some people is, would. You know, there is that percent, low percent chance or whatever yeah. that, uh, you know, maybe something, by some miracle, you end up making it. Yeah. I mean, at this... Oh, shit. Whoa, I thought we were... <laughs> I thought we were done there. Okay. Um, but, okay. But even though you've made that choice and that was the right decision for you, there's also been cases where the person that was holding them or watching that loved one die really fucked up some members of that family yeah. and caused the print. There was actually... Uh, I can maybe find it and I might... I no! I knew I jumped too soon! <laughs> that was it! That was it! I'll see if I can find the article. Um, but there was there was a wife and it, it happened... This exact same scenario happened mm -hmm. and she felt so guilty for letting him make that choice and him dying in her arms that she got severe depression and took her own life yeah um, so mm. I, I don't know it's such a it's such a weird thing because there, then there's people who say well if you say that somebody should just be alive just for you that's selfish I I you know I know and a lot of a lot of that's why I said before is like I know it might be an unpopular decision 
you know, saying or or opinion saying, you know, it doesn't just affect it doesn't just affect you. Um, yeah, that it's tough because there is the other side. There yeah. is the other side. The people the people that have to that have to deal with the aftermath, and some people can't. And because of that, yeah, they might take their lives. They might do, you know, they might something. So essentially, it's like taking two lives or three lives or however many right yeah and it's oh god i i know and it's such a touchy thing because everybody has their own their own strong opinions on it because put you put yourself in both of those situations so if you put yourself in the first situation where a doctor tells you you've got a metastatic brain cancer we can't operate on it <laughs> treatment isn't going to do anything for you then we actually know somebody like that that it's happening to right now yeah and in two months or less, you're gonna pass away. Like that's it. And it's it's gonna be painful and it's gonna be terrible. You're not gonna be yourself. You're gonna lose control of yourself. Um, people are gonna have to take care of you up until the day that you die. Yeah. Mm. I can completely understand the decision of saying I don't want to go through this. I don't want to. I don't want to be like that. I don't want you guys to remember me like that. I don't want to be a burden. I'd rather be surrounded by my loved ones and go out, go out the way that I want to go out. Yeah. But then you put yourself in the other shoes. It's like, and I think about my fiance, and I cannot literally imagine holding her as she breathes her last breath. Exactly. <clears throat> it makes me fucking tear up just fucking thinking about it. Yeah. I I can't imagine what it's like. So I think you have to be in the situation to know, I guess. Well, and see, that's the thing, is like, because it's such a huge decision with huge consequences, until you get put in that situation and you actually are forced <coughs> to make a decision and deal with it, you have no idea yeah. how you're going to handle it and what you're actually going to do, because there's there's no way. How could how could you know? Yeah, it's like... You know, it's easy, it's easy enough to say, oh yeah, I would definitely do this, and then when the time comes, you have no idea what you're going to do. Yeah, and, and for her specifically, because I, I always use my fiance as an example, because she's the closest thing that I really have, and I always think, am I strong enough to let her make that decision? Mm -hmm. Am I strong enough to understand that it's just better for her? And yeah, it'll suck for me, but I love her enough that I don't want her to be in pain anymore. I don't know, it's just... It's something that I that I think about from time to time when it... Because when you get older, you know, you get in your 60s and 70s, it, it might be a decision that you have to make, you know? It might be. I mean, it doesn't even have to be that old. Like, when we're... Yeah, when we're talking about, like, cases of terminal cancer or other stuff like that, or maybe you have some kind of really bad disease that makes it so yeah you're basically a vegetable and you will not get better you'll just live your life as a vegetable yeah is that you know is that how you want to live is that how because you know it's tough not to think of what it's doing to your loved ones because they're the ones who are gonna have to look after you when you literally can't do anything for yourself right yeah because honestly my grandparents are kind of going through that right now my grandpa's not doing well yeah he like He's basically lost most control of his body, and my grandma now has to look after him and do everything for him. And I know it's really hard on her because, you know, you go from, you know, this person that you love, you've always, you've had your whole lives together, you guys are doing whatever you want, you're having a great time, and then all of a sudden, they're not so much the same anymore. They're maybe, they're not all mentally there. You know, it's not necessarily, like, I mean, physically, it's still a person. You might get moments where it's, it's still that person that you, you know, you married, but now they're more of a shell than anything yeah it's <sighs> it's a it's a tough decision it's one of those decisions and things that everybody has to deal with in life but i don't think that we'll ever figure out how it should be dealt with properly yeah like i just i i don't think that there's a good way to deal with it yeah yeah cryogenically freeze me i guess yeah until 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 you guys can figure out uh, a way to cure whatever it is i've got stick me next to walt disney i'm yep. almost as famous <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're right there we're yeah. so close well anyways i guess this brings us to the end of uh this talking play series of donkey kong country yeah uh so but fear not 
We are planning next to do the third one. I don't know if we'll have, well, we, we, we might do the second one eventually, but we both agreed that we actually really like the third one. So third one is my favorite, by so far. So we're probably gonna do the third one next. So, next time you see our talk and play, we're, we're gonna, gonna be on the next level. So we'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Goodbye.